Good morning. I'm Rebecca Endy Lichtenberg, Studio Theater's Executive Director, and I am thrilled to welcome all of you, as well as our esteemed speakers today, to this ribbon cutting, which marks the completion of Studio Theater's first renovation in over 20 years. Studio has been a fixture in Logan Circle for over 40 years, but we have come a long way from our early years as a one-stage space in a former hot dog cart warehouse to our four theater complex today. This current transformation was in the planning stages for many years. Call the Open Studio Campaign because one of the core tenets of the project is to open the building up to the community and create a vibrant neighborhood gathering space. This renovation has also set the stage for a new era of artistic innovation at Studio Theater and invested in the long-term sustainability of our building. Being in the unexpected position of having our stages dark due to the pandemic gave us the opportunity to move the renovation forward while our building was dark. Through the extraordinary support of our board and other key funders, we were able to finally make Open Studio a reality. With the help of our key project partners, Forrester Construction, architecture firm Hickok Cole, and JMZL Partners, we broke ground in April of last year and are finally now ready to welcome audiences back to a brand new space. I'm going to hand things over to our incomparable artistic director, David Muse, to talk more about the project and what it will enable for Studio's future. Thank you, Rebecca. It's a genuine pleasure to welcome you all. <clears throat> uh, I, I got a clear sign this morning that this project is actually happening. My three-year-old daughter built a little structure out of foam blocks, and then she said to me, Daddy, it's the studio theater. <laughs> she placed three figures in it. She said, that's me, that's you, and that's Christopher Robin. So at least two attendees are missing. <clears throat> uh, it does still feel strange and exciting to have gatherings of people in our building. And this gathering is particularly special because it's a room full of people who've supported our dreams. I'm going to talk briefly about what we set out to do with Open Studio, whose completion we uh, celebrate today. And that involves talking about three central aims, I'm going to start with the least sexy of the three. That's a name we call operational efficiency. That means a new HVAC system, uh, which is a giant undertaking in a building this size. We haven't learned how to control the temperature in this room yet. Uh, I know it's a little bit warm, but you know, uh, hopefully after all those hundreds of thousands of dollars on that HVAC, we'll be able to figure it out. Uh, we, ha we have a new roof. We have solar panels. We have fixed up backstage spaces for the artists who work here. And believe it or not, we have our first dedicated rehearsal room. Um, for about 30 years, we were a building with multiple theaters and no rehearsal room. <clears throat> aim two, artistic innovation. That aim centers really on this room, um, predominantly. Most of you probably know what this theater looked like uh, before we renovated it. It was, like our other venues in this building, a fixed seat thrust theater with seats on three sides and a central playing space in the middle. Um, don't get me wrong, I love the thrust, but it's not ideal for every play there is. And our basic idea was let's create a space that lets you suit the space to the play rather than stuff the space play into whatever space you have. This room can be set up like a thrust, <clears throat> also in the round, also with alley style seating with a playing space in the middle and audience on two sides, also as a proscenium space, or none of the above, as an immersive or environmental design in which the set is the whole room and the seating is designed into it. This Theater features a tension wire grid above us, which means that crew members can freely walk uh, on the ceiling as they hang lights. Those grid, there's a, a grid up there, and the grids are removable, which means we can uh, fly scenery in from above. We have these walls on which you can actually hang lights, um, so you don't have to install pipes to do it. We have LED lighting technology, which will be here just as soon as the shipping delays <coughs> are sorted out. Um, acoustical separation from the rest of our building, so we don't have to worry about uh, large events in other parts of the building when we're performing in here. 
Uh, we did want a room that still has some character, so we've avoided calling it a, a black box, but just in that that implies some sort of anonymity to the space. So we retained that beautiful wall with all of its layers of history, and we installed these perforated raw metal panels um, on the other three walls to give it um, some character. All of that means that going forward, I get to say to directors and to design teams, go wherever your imagination takes you. The first production here will happen this summer. It's a play called Hot Wing King. It recently won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama. It's a comedy written by the amazing Katori Hall, and I hope you can come check it out. Aim three, we call Community Connection. Here at Studio, we believe that theater is a public good something like a library, and that a theater should be a space for civic dialogue, a place for a community to come and gather and reflect, not a temple for the well-to-do. So we wanted our building to help us say, please come in. This is a place for you. This is a place for everyone. So we've worked to open up and enliven the fortress that we've had on the corner of 14th and P. We move the box office from deep in the building right up to 14th Street so somebody can greet people right as they come off the street. We fixed up our lobbies, which will keep open and active for most of the day and which will serve as a gathering space, not just for theater patrons, but also for our community partners, for artists, and for anybody who just wants a place to relax. We renovated the exterior to let the city know what's going on in here. Uh, that work is ongoing. Uh, right now, there are some temporary mur murals serving as stand-ins for the more permanent ones to come. And we're partnering with an outfit called Reiko Coffee to run an all-day cafe serving coffee, drinks, and food. It will occupy our lobby adjoining P Street, and seating will spill out onto P Street itself outside of the building. Reiko will open in the fall after outfitting their space over the summer, and that will really mark the end of all of the work that we're doing on the building. Now, all of this was made possible by the work and support of literally hundreds of people, including our staff, our tireless staff, our board, our tireless board, <coughs> supporters, the city. So to everyone here who played a role in making it possible, I want to extend to you my heartfelt thanks. This is our next chapter, and we're thrilled to start writing it. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to introduce Ward 2 Councilmember Brooke Pinto, who we are honored to have representing our district in here with us today. Thank you, Rebecca, and good morning, everybody. Great to be here at Studio Theater with you. As Rebecca said, my name is Brooke Pinto, and I have the privilege of representing this ward, Ward 2, on the D.C. Council. And it is an honor to be here to celebrate all of the hard work that went into making the renovation of Studio Theater a reality. I think one of my very first meetings the day after I was elected was with Rebecca on this vision and the importance of supporting Studio Theater. And congratulations to artistic director David Muse and campaign co-chairs Susan Butler and Amy Weinberg. Thank you very much, Mayor Bowser and Greg O'Dell of Events DC, Reggie Van Lee of the DC Commission on Arts and Humanities for the support of this important project and your support of the arts in our city more broadly, which are vitally important this year more than ever. For over four decades, Studio Theater has been a pillar in our community, providing an outlet for the arts and entertainment. And I should know because I live just around the corner. And for the past 35 years, Studio Theater has been a physical cornerstone of the 14th Street and Logan Circle community, which we are honored to have here. Its longevity is a testament to its commitment to producing and I quote, plays that challenge assumptions, spark conversations, and offer both surprise and connection, which is always so true here. 
Over the last two years, we have all been yearning for connection. And as we continue to endeavor towards a robust and equitable recovery, it is the arts community and venues like Studio Theater that bring us together for a deeper understanding and appreciation for the world around us. The renovation intentionally brings the community together, providing a cafe to host folks during the day, gender inclusive restrooms to welcome all of our guests, unique performance spaces to allow artists the flexibility and environmentally friendly upgrades to reflect all of our needs to address climate change. I am so thrilled to attend shows here in this space and applaud all of you and celebrate with you on this momentous occasion. Thank you. One of our critical partners in this project has been Sandy Spring Bank, which provided the funding for our construction project. Um, without their belief in this project and their flexibility in structuring our funding, we would not have been able to move this forward. I would like to introduce Joyce Wilker, who is the Senior Vice President for Commercial Banking at Sandy Spring Bank. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you to the studio theater team and all of the dedicated supporters for bringing this project to life, bringing DC area audiences and visitors the best in contemporary theater. Sandy Spring Bank has a track record of supporting the arts and culture sector in our region, and we are proud to build on that tradition with studio theater. Working with the talented and dedicated studio team is a delight and has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my banking career. Studio's welcoming community space gives us a reason to get off of our couches, get out of the house, and connect with people at the theater. The energy from being together the hum of anticipation in the audience, the actors' voices echoing in the dark, and the illumination of our shared humanity to live theater, to studio, to the next 40 years and beyond. Thank you and congratulations to all. Next, I'm pleased to be able to introduce Greg O'Dell, who is the president and CEO of Events DC. His commitment to the development and promotion of the cultural activities in the district has benefited the entire arts community, including providing generous support for the Open Studio Project through their Cultural Institutions Grants Program. Greg, thank you so much. Well, good morning, everyone. I know we can do better than that. Good morning, everyone. Well, let me say on behalf of our board of directors and our staff, it's, a, it's just my honor to be here, and we're so delighted uh, to really celebrate this momentous occasion for the next chapter, as was already said before. You know, for me, I will say personally, it's just exciting to see really the entertainment corridor now coming back to life. It's even more exciting to see that studio is really a big part of that as well. Let's face it, it's been really tough the last two years for many of our community, and frankly, almost everyone in our community. But I will say it's been especially tough really to see our arts and entertainment industry really come to a halt as a result of the pandemic. But I give a lot of credit to Rebecca and to the team, to the board, and to many of you who really supported them, but they took the time to really embark on this wonderful renovation that we see here today. And what amazing space. What was already said before about the amenities that you're gonna see and share. But I think what's important also, what, what wasn't said is that you'll see this facade. You know, this, this institution has been a wonderful asset for decades. But, you know, it's been low stated, frankly, uh, and low key in its presence. But I think the bold marquee signs, you'll see the facade really will now highlight the gem that it's going to be for this community and for the city. And so I think that's exciting. I think it's the right move. The last thing I will say, and first I should give all the credit in the world to the leader of our city who's helped us recovery, Mayor Mio Browser, so please give me a round of, leave her a round of applause and join us for that. But one of the things I, I will say, and the mayor always stresses, that it's our restaurants, our hotels, our concert venues, our theaters, 
really are the ones that are driving the economy for us, putting people back to work. But what was also said, it's also about connecting again. We saw too many people suffer from mental illness and from isolation. So it's not just about the, the economy and the fiscal responsibility, but it's also about connecting us again. It's very important, and that's going to help drive our economy and also drive prosperity for us. So congratulations to everyone who's been a part of this amazing experience, and thank you for having me here today. Thank you. The DC Commission on the Arts and Humanity has also been a very important partner for us in this project. They helped underwrite the planning phase of this all the way back in 2016, and they were also one of our first pillars of the campaign, which really enabled us to move this project forward. They play an incredibly important role in ensuring the health and longevity of our city's cultural institutions, which is so important for studio as well as all the other arts organizations in town. We want to thank the commission for their ongoing support as well as the incredible investment that they've made of over three and a half million dollars in this transformation. It is my honor to invite the newly appointed chairperson of the commission, Mr. Reginald Van Lee, to speak. Good morning. My name is Reggie Van Great. I like the response. My name is Reggie Van Lee, and I have the honor of serving as the chair of the D.C. Commission on the Arts and Humanities, the state arts agency for the District of Columbia. Uh, when we at the commission speak in public, we have a tendency to describe ourselves for the benefit of our visually impaired community. So I am a black man wearing a blue suit with a white shirt and a colorful tie. On behalf of the members and staff of the Arts Commission, I offer my congratulations to Rebecca and David and the entire studio theater family for this momentous accomplishment. The commission is proud to have awarded studio over $3.8 million in grants funds for the last five years in support of this renovation. A defining characteristic of this project and why it means so much to me and to the commission is that it's centered in community and that is very important to us. Certainly, modernizing the space with new technology, new seats, signage, and infrastructure is important. But what is sometimes left out of capital projects like this are the people that keep the institution humming, our friends, neighbors, and community members. That's why I appreciate that the studio has focused on updating the exterior and interior of the building to help bring in and welcome new audiences with a dynamic street entrance and presence, a more welcoming and forward-facing box office right off 14th Street, and expanded lobby spaces to serve as community gathering spots, and a neighborhood hub that is open to the community to use. There's a thoughtfulness in their planning that bodes well for studio and embodies the spirit of this place being for everyone. All that in addition to delivering an incredible new theater space with limitless creative potential and a new rehearsal hall to enhance their work on stage supporting the next generation of innovation and exciting new theater. This is the kind of project we like to see and support, one that balances investment in community and artistic integrity in equal measure, ensuring that they both can thrive. So once again, congratulations to Studio Theater, and thank you for all that you continue to contribute to the district. Thank you. I now get to introduce our formidable campaign co-chairs, Susan Butler and Amy Weinberg. They are going to come up and thank a lot of people, um, but they are the ones who truly deserve to be thanked. Their unrivaled dedication, generosity, and persuasive leadership is truly the engine that moved this train forward. They have helped to create a lasting legacy and paved the way for the next era at Studio Theater. Susan and Amy. Well, I'm Susan Butler. And I'm Amy Weinberg. There we go. Got that over with. <laughs> so did everyone hear that our first grant for this was in 2016? <laughs> Just keep that in mind. When David initially came to the board with the idea of Open Studio, the transformative capital project that your city admits, uh, we could immediately see the potential for Studio. Studio's board and leadership have always kept community and artistry as the focus of this project. And when he asked for our support, what could we do but say yes? Of course, our first thank you is to David for his vision, to Rebecca for her collaborative leadership of the project, 
and of course to studio's amazing cat, uh, staff, some of whom are in the room right now. So we had our shoes all shined and we were all set and guess what, the world shut down. But that was okay because it showed that we weren't the only ones who believed in this project. We experienced the tremendous support from the community and individual donors and that really helped us maintain our momentum. And you all stood by the theater during its most turbulent time. But here we are now and now for the good stuff. As Rebecca said, we get to thank a lot of people, which is great. It's a group sport, so you can clap. Um, at so the end. At the end, <laughs> right. So let's start. Okay, we want to thank the board of the studio and the generous campaign supporters and our open studio committee leaders and the visionary leadership of the city whose support really kept us alive during COVID, so thank you, Mayor Bowser. Now we want to name the pillars of this campaign individually. Let's start by thanking Mr. Greg O'Dell and Events DC and Mr. Reggie Van Lee and the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities and the SHARE Fund. Amy Weinberg and Norbert Hornstein. Susan and Dixon <laughs> Butler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Morris and Gwendolyn Kayfords Foundation. Arlene and Bob Kogod. Sorry, Hornstein. Judge Albert Lauber and Professor Craig Hoffman. Teresa and Dan Schwartz. And finally, of course, a special thank you to Craig Pascal for allowing us to name our new venue the Victor Shargai Theater in honor of his late husband, the indomitable, incredible DC theater uh, champion, Victor Shargai. We're incredibly grateful to be, to be here now, to share this reopening with all of you, and to know that we have made a real, tangible difference in one of DC's premier arts venue, enabling to sustain itself artistically, operationally, and financially for decades to come. And now, it's my great pleasure to turn this over to our mayor, the Honorable Muriel Bowser. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, please give a big round of applause to Susan and Amy. Give them a big round of applause. I don't know all the details of the campaign, but I know to get here today, uh, it, di it doesn't surprise me that there are two persistent women uh, pushing uh, to make uh, this happen. Uh, I am really delighted to stand before you. And as David was describing uh, this room, this theater, I felt um, like I was already getting ready for a show. Uh, to think how thoughtfully uh, the, the walls and how the spaces for all of the, the theater folks who are going to be hanging scenery and lights uh, will work, uh, how you can set the chairs differently, uh, how uh, you are not really constricted uh, by fixed seating, all of that description uh, just made me want to be here all the more. Uh, as I listen uh, to all of the speakers, uh, I am reminded that transformative projects take a lot of hands and a lot of people involved. The government, the private sector, uh, it, it takes private citizens saying this is important to us uh, and we want to contribute, uh, but it really starts with a vision. Uh, so I want to thank uh, all of the theater folks here at studio. David, your vision uh, is, is a beautiful one that connects this space. It makes it a wonderful space for the actors, also for people who are coming in and people who have to work on this project. Uh, and it is true, Greg, I will get to why it, while talking about theater is fun, is also important to um, the bottom line of our city. So give David and studio a big round of applause. So when you're the mayor, uh, you do focus on uh, making sure that people know uh, that they can work in the arts in Washington, D.C. 
Uh, and we spend a lot of time making sure people uh, know that we can do that and that the city is behind them. Uh, we're behind great spaces. We're uh, behind affordable housing. We're behind safe communities. We're behind great schools. Uh, and that's how we continue uh, to to attract uh, people that want to come and work in the arts in Washington, D.C. We've all been through the last two years. We're looking forward to the next two years. If you're me, you're looking forward to the next four years. Uh, and it is so important that we get back to life. Uh, I want to thank everybody here who's been a part of getting back to life, getting vaccinated, doing everything that public health officials have asked, our Commission on the Arts, Events DC, who have been very instrumental in making sure that we can provide the bridge funds that keep our cultural institutions alive. But also just the reminder, it's not enough in a city like ours to do the basics, is it? Uh, and it's not, it's n we don't want a city that doesn't have the arts because it's all black and white. Uh, and when we can have the arts come alive, we know that we have a city that is bursting with color. And I am proud to have a city like ours that supports transformative projects um, like the one here at Studio. Um, so we will look forward to continuing to get our workers, our visitors, and all of our patrons back to fill out theaters and restaurants and 14th Street uh, and the new festival that we will invest in as well uh, so that everybody knows how special it is to come to Washington. Uh, the one thing people have asked me frequently, are we going to get back, Mayor? And I, I, I say with confidence that we will. And one thing that gets us back is to make sure we're thinking about our destination, as they say at Events DC, and all of the new things that we add. So now when Greg and his team I'll say something about Greg. When Greg and his team go out to attract conferences and conventions to our city, they have a long list of new attractions that people will be able to enjoy in Washington. And one of them will be this transformed space on 14th Street, not on the mall, but in our neighborhoods. Um, that's so important. So I want to thank my team. And if you would grant me just a moment of privilege to acknowledge Greg Godell at Event DC because after 13 years he's moving on uh, but he has done an incredible job making sure that the world knows that the meeting place the events place um, the place where you can experience America and local Washington all at the same time as Washington DC so congratulations Greg on your next steps so with that friends we can't wait uh, for the shows to begin thank you very much Mayor Bowser, that was great, but you're not done. We have one more job for you. We need you to cut the ribbon and get this place open for business. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mayor Bowser. Um, we now invite all of you to come and see our renovated building. <laughs> 